Welcome to German History with a German Accent. My name is Wolf, W-O-L-F, just like the animal. And in this video, I'm speaking a little bit about Friedrich Paulus. If you like this video, please give me a like and subscribe to this channel. Friedrich Paulus was born in September 1890 and died in February 1957. In 1909, graduated high school and wanted to join the Navy, but was rejected. After he was rejected, he studied law for one semester before he joined the army in February 1910. When World War I started, he was stationed at the Western Front. After an extended sickness, he returned to the front in 1915. During the war, he was also used at the Balkan Front and the Southern Front. Paulus was decorated with the Iron Cross Second and First Class. After the war, he was kept on in the 100,000-man army. During the time of the Weimar Republic, he had several assignments as general staff officer and was promoted to the rank of major. Friedrich Paulus's personal opinion about the rise of the Nazis is not documented, but in general, the military had a positive attitude towards the Nazis' plan to reverse the contract of Versailles. Friedrich Paulus was one of the leading developers of the German tank force. When World War II started, he was chief of the general staff in the 10th Army, which was later renamed in the 6th Army. He was working closely with Walter von Reichenau during the Poland and West campaign. Afterwards, he was transferred to the general staff of the army and became chief planner of Operation Barbarossa which was the code name for the Soviet campaign. After a brief use in North Africa, he returned back to Berlin into the general staff. When the German troops attacked the Soviet Union in June 1941, the German army advanced rapidly into the Soviet territory. But against the advice of his generals, Hitler ordered the German army to occupy economically important areas instead of strategically important territories. This mistake was a significant reason why the resources for a successful attack of Moscow were no longer available. When Walter von Reichenau was promoted to the general of the army group South, he requested Friedrich Paulus to take over the command of his 6th army. A lot of eyebrows were risen since General Paulus had hardly led any troops in the past. His command style was very different than Reichenau's. Reichenau was a risk-taker and led his troops without much hesitation, whereas Paulus led mostly from his desk and was very hesitant. One of his first orders was to take back the Commissar Order, which basically allowed the German troops to do whatever they wanted to Soviet civilians. After Paulus successfully defended against a massive Soviet attack and captured about 240,000 Red Army soldiers, at the Battle of Kharkov. The way to the oil fields in the Caucasus region and Stalingrad was clear. During this campaign, Hitler split the army group forces to occupy Stalingrad and the Caucasus at the same time. In August 1942, the Battle of Stalingrad began. During the next several months, the 6th Army was weakened more and more, often without advancing a few feet. Nevertheless, the 6th Army almost conquered 90% of the city before, on November 20th, a massive attack by Soviet troops broke through the weak flank protections of the army and encircled the 6th Army completely. Paulus warned Hitler about this possibility about two months earlier. General Paulus intended to break out instantly, but Hitler refused and replied it is essential to hold the so-called Fortress of Stalingrad. Hermann Göring promised to supply the army with the German Air Force, but failed miserably. General Field Marshal Erich von Manstein tried to rescue the 6th Army by sending the 4th Tank Army under General Hoff to build a connection to resupply the 6th Army with food, ammunition and fuel. This attack failed 
due to further advancement of the Red Army that threatened to encircle the entire southern flank, which would have meant roughly around one million soldiers to be encircled. At the end of January and beginning of February 1943, the Sixth Army stopped its resistance and went into captivity. 90,000 men were capt captured these days, and hardly 6,000 returned home. Paulus, who was promoted to the rank of General Field Marshal on January 31st, surrendered and also went into captivity, although Hitler expected his suicide. Paulus stayed a prisoner of war until 1953, shortly after Stalin's death. After his captivity, Friedrich Paulus chose to live in the German Democratic Republic, where he died in February 1957 as a result of ALS.